Thank you, Mr. Wilson. We'll move to Ms. Chender. Thank you very much. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but just that last question around accessing the federal funding. Um, do you have a time? I, I understand that the, their timeline was more ambitious than what, what we thought possible. Um, but uh, is there a time when you expect to access the full amount of that funding or a timeline that you could give us? Mr. Montgomery. So our department actually uh, works with the federal government on this file because we're dealing with the universities uh, and the community college. And my senior leader on that file is Ava Zapley. I can get that more detailed answer for you, but my understanding is that there is a, a schedule of payment that's set out. They want the facility finished earlier than we're able to, as many of the other facilities across Canada are, and we've asked for an extension, and we're confident that will occur. The government of Canada has been very understanding. Mm -hmm. They actually toured the site, and maybe if I can, I can refer to Jennifer, who was part of that uh, tour, and, and give some feedback that the federal officials gave. Ms. Angel. I wasn't part of that tour. <laughs> I hear it was a great tour. Um, uh, but I can tell you that we're, we're approaching uh, these timelines and budgets with uh, a great deal of conservatism. So we're trying to ensure that we have the capacity uh, to, do, to do the job in, a, in an approved timeline and budget. Uh, we still have the an, original, very ambitious, like even, even lofty timeline in our sites. So we will be very close. And, and I, I think the, the generally held belief is uh, that, that they will be achieved, yeah. Thank you, um, and I should have started by thanking you all for being here and, and noting that I am especially happy to see you here as the representative for Dartmouth South. Uh, it's a very exciting project um, uh, for Dartmouth and for Nova Scotia. Uh, so we are keen to ask the questions, whether or not it's in the purview of this committee, I'll leave to the more senior members, but I'm certainly happy that we're discussing it. Um, one question I have, um, is you mentioned, uh, which I understand, the idea that you'd prefer to have smaller, uh, uh, more smaller tenants um, interacting with one another for all of the reasons and synergies um, that, we, that we understand in that area. Um, I guess the two questions I have about that is you mentioned you weren't conventionally seeking anchor tenants. Now that being said, I know from having toured the site twice myself and had, having had conversations with Jim and others, uh, that there has been discussion around um, a larger military footprint or a larger government footprint in some portion of the site. I wonder if you could speak to whether that is likely to occur or is part of that current expression of interest that you're exploring. Mr. Montgomery. I'll start and ask Jim, Jim to add, but one of, the, one of the things I've learned in the last several years around innovation and driving innovation, the days of anchor tenants are gone. You're looking to develop a, state, a site that's vibrant, that's able to change and adapt and be able to deal with companies who are looking for help to solve problems in a very, so it's, it's, it's a, that sort of was a traditional way of doing things. Let's get an anchor tenant in here and away we go. And I'd ask Jim, Mr. Chair, if, to add to that. Mr. Hanlon. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. Uh, early on, we did very frequently use this term anchor tenant. In fact, when you toured, we might have even used those terms. I think we, we have shifted to a different model, which is uh, a presence from a multitude of organizations, small, medium, and large. Uh, and, and in addition, though, an opportunity, we think, for some uh, corporate sponsorship of the programs at Cove, um, in, in a way very similar to what the Irving Corporation has already contributed, the $4.52 million that they've contributed to the operating budget. But, but we're not expecting, nor are we seeing from Irving, any desire to occupy large amounts of the space. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what I think we end up with is a situation where we can derive revenue, derive market involvement from those large organizations, which is critical for the small uh, companies, without using up a large part of the footprint, which is limited. That, that's our hope. And so are you anticipating that there might be a significant footprint, whether or not we call it anchor, by either government or military at this time? No. Um, okay. So on the military side, if you're, you're talking about uh, de Department of Defense employees, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I, I, we would hope to have them coming and going and, and collaborating with us, particularly on some uh, research and development projects around marine robotics. Mm -hmm. But uh, they've never expressed an interest in occupying a large amount of a large part of the space. Uh, in terms of aerospace defense companies, um, as we all know um, in the news, there's the, the final decisions being made as we speak about the Canadian Service Combatant Program, the next big shipbuilding program to follow on AOPS at, 
the uh, Health Tech Shipyard. Um, as a result of all that activity, there will be offset commitments by those bidders, um, both value propositions and in industrial technological benefit programs, um, where we've been engaging with all those bidders, all those consortia, uh, very thoroughly over the last year to make sure that Cove is a part of their, their plan. Um, but those plans will not result in large swaths of the buildings being occupied by those, uh, by those companies. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be opportunities for collaboration as opposed to occupying large amounts of space. I wanna say one other thing, whether it's a small, a medium, or a large company, um, the highest and best use of this facility is not manufacturing or inventory storage. It's just simply too valuable a space. And so what we're hoping is that all those organizations will put their um, engineers, scientists, strategic marketeers that will be able to kind of more fully collaborate and get high value out of the site as opposed to just racks of storage of equipment or light manufacturing. That belongs in other parts of the city and the region. Thank you. Um, so that being said, I was also interested by this discussion and, and it's become clear over the course of, of this exchange that you know, this isn't a conventional real estate play, um, as Ms. Angel said. Now that being said, uh, we've heard that you have more expressions of interest than you can accommodate, that you do anticipate to cover the costs uh, of the building and maintenance through this rent. Um, but again, it's not a conventional real estate play. So I guess my question is, how are you triaging those tenants? What is it that is um, determining who you take and how much space they get and why? Ms. Angel? Or Ms. Mr. Hanlon. Why don't I start, and then Jen, Jen and I are, work, are tag team in this literally in real time. So believe it or not, we spent two very intense days before <laughs> Christmas and more to come in, in having those discussions. And so our, our criteria is, is uh, multi-layered. Um, to put it really bluntly from me, uh, one of the, the limiting factors we have is not enough square feet at Cove in general terms. So from my point of view, one of my crass criteria is GDP growth per square foot of Cove. The organizations that come there either individually or in synergy with the combination of other organizations, the whole imperative is to grow the ocean economy of Nova Scotia. And so I think from my, our point of view, our questions to those candidate tenants are along the lines of how will Cove help you grow your business and how will your presence at Crow, Cove hope grow, grow, help grow the other businesses that are gonna be resident there. So it's a combination of the synergy effects, the market access effects of that common marketing power uh, and, and, and the use of the facility itself, the physical access to water, access to equipment that can be prohibitive, particularly for the small and medium companies. Ms. Angel? Yeah, I would just add, um, uh, also unlike a traditional real estate play, so, so we're challenging prospective tenants to minimize their, their required footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, and somewhat novelly at Cove, um, we have a lot of shared space. So you don't have within your demise space, for example, a board, a thousand square foot boardroom. Rather, you have access to a shared boardroom facility. Mm -hmm. And through, uh, through the, the access uh, to those facilities, we're able to minimize uh, the actual um, uh, directly attributable square feet, uh, square feet to any one company. Um, and, and secondly, I would, I would note, and Jim may have already said it, and I apologize if I, I missed that. Um, we're also introducing um, uh, some uh, options around uh, very short, term tenancies, mm. so there will be hot desking uh, facilities available you know, for daily, weekly type uses. There are um, gross rent uh, uh, desks available for rent, so you may have a company with 30 employees, but they have one hot desk for $500 a month at Cove that they rotate employees through, and, and through uh, those various options and approaches, you're able to get a lot more representation uh, from uh, uh, diverse companies uh, in, a limited, in a limited square foot uh, footprint. Great, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, it's, it's, um, there's, a, there's a huge number, as you pointed out, of institutions involved in this project. So um, for, for myself, it's a little bit tricky to understand how they all work together. Uh, but I understand that the organization that you uh, lead, Mr. Hanlon, which is the Institute for Ocean Research Enterprise, I believe, um, I'm not clear whether that is Cove, whether it's rebranding as Cove, um, and whether in either case there are other things that that institute is continuing to do outside the scope of this project, if you could speak to that. Mr. Hanlon. Sure, I'd be happy to. It's, um, the, it, it is, it is uh, there's a lot of moving parts to this, so you're, you're, uh, you're, 
it's not, an, not a, unexpected that there needs to be a bit of explanation. The role of IORE, the Institute for Ocean Research Enterprise and all this, is to be the overseeing executive agency on behalf of the economy of Nova Scotia. So um, to be clear, we're not an agent of the province. We're a federally incorporated not-for-profit corporation right. that's been around for about seven years. Um, our role all along has been to sort of sit at the intersect between uh, research, um, government, and uh, industry around growing the ocean economy. That's been since day one. So as it turns out, we've been involved in the whole ideation of Cove almost since day one. and. Uh, with uh, the late Colin McLean, among others, Jennifer's predecessor. And so um, we go right back to the origins of the idea. Um, our, our role is to really just keep uh, the finger on the pulse of what's good for the economy of, the, of, of Nova Scotia from a private sector point of view. So that's really what I think we're bringing to the table. Um, we will continue to be a corporation called IORE as a, as a federally incorporated um, organization. Um, we will simply use the brand Cove as will all our partners in this. So we're in, in, the, in the interest of trying to simplify uh, this whole branding for the private sector, everyone will use the name Cove. So as an example, my card these days says Cove as opposed to IORE. But from a legal point of view, we are still a separate company. Uh, and we bring in other programs. As an example, um, under the Irving um, um, Value Proposition AOPS, uh, we have separate funding, uh, separate from this, for uh, $950,000 uh, to look at uh, skills and training needs of the, of the uh, marine industry across Canada. We do work with the, um, the Atlantic Pilage Authority, the Port of Halifax, the Port of St. John, and the Coast Guard around monitoring buoys in the, in the two ports. And so we have a, a variety of other programs that we bring to the Cove table in synergy. As, as far as I'm concerned, they all add to the, the equation. The net cost of our involvement to the province of Nova Scotia in all this, by the way, is zero because we're separately funded. Order. Thank you. The time has expired.